You're kidding, aren't you? No, my dear. I'm very serious. $1,342.76 or else... What? Or else... Uh, I'll blow up the bank. And 76 cents? Excuse me, lady, but I think you want it. Oh, no. I don't think so. Yes? You want? What? The teller's waving to you. I'm sorry, young man. I'm in a hurry. Well, if you'll don't you excuse see the me. Teller, she's waving. Lady, lady uh, do you have a, a bomb in that bag? A uh, what? I said, do you have a bomb in that bag? Oh. Careful, careful! Where is everyone going? No, 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 don't move. Everyone out of the bank. Out of the bank, I said, everybody. Call the bomb squad. Now put it down very carefully. No, 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 no. Lady, please put it down carefully, will you? Slowly, carefully. Now don't shake it, don't shake it. That's right, that's all, oh, that's fine. Oh, lady. Oh, thank you. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Please answer the door. We'll all answer the door together. Miss Clarendon? I am Miss Elspeth Clarendon. And I am Miss Genevieve Clarendon. Parkhurst here. Well, Miss Louise Clarendon is being. She's not home. You'll have to come back later. She's not coming home, lady. She's in the women's house of detention. What is she doing there, officer? She's under arrest for robbing a bank. Well, thank you for the information, officer. Good day. I think it's absolute rubbish. They've certainly made a mistake. Louise, rob a bank! Ha! Nonsense. Yes, it must be some other Louise Clarendon. Though, to be honest, I, I can't conceive of anyone of our name doing a thing like that. Louise will be along shortly, you'll see. Uh, Elspeth, I think we just ought to go ahead and lay the tea things, just like we always do, and wait for Louise. She ought to be here any minute. Have you noticed the telephone hasn't rung lately? Can't say that I have. What's that got to do with it? Well, if the police wanted to let us know that she was under arrest, why didn't they simply telephone us? Why did they have to send an officer to our house? Well, why didn't Louise call us herself when she knew she was going to be late? Now you mention it, I can't remember the telephone ringing in quite some time. Do you want to know something? I tried using the phone last week, and it didn't work. Sometimes telephones go out of order. Sometimes they don't work because people don't pay their bills. I can't believe that. Louise always pays bills. Papa used to swear by Louise. I'm going to get my coat and I'm oh, going down to no, the woman's house of detention no, and speak to no, Louise. No, Elsa, please don't go. Let's just wait here for Louise. Oh, now you're being silly. We've got to find out if she needs our help. Of course, if Louise is in trouble, she'll need help from a lawyer. Perhaps we ought to speak to a lawyer first. Oh, that's so. Well, look, there's a couple of lawyers in the telephone book, Genevieve. Lawyer, you know, K, G, K, K, oh, here he is. Here, lawyer. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Oh, there's so many of them, Elspeth. How do we know which one? Oh, we'll just pick any one. What's the difference? They're all alike. I know. I know. I'll choose one with my lucky pin. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> But, Miss Clarendon, your sister's being held on a charge of grand larceny. It also seems she threatened to blow up the bank. Well, that's all sheer nonsense, Mr. Presta. As I have explained, my sister is not that sort of person. But the police don't usually make that sort of mistake. Now, uh, perhaps uh, your sister... Well, you know, sometimes when a person gets along in years, uh, uh, they do uh, eccentric things. Louise, eccentric? Oh. Obviously, you know nothing about her, young man, or about me, either. But you will, you will. The Clarendons are a very unique family, and Louise Clarendon is a very unique woman, even if she is my sister. There, I think that takes care of everything. You may bring Louise home. Well, it may not be that simple, Miss Clarendon. Uh, you see, there's a matter of bail. Oh, well, I leave all the details to you, Mr. Lawrence. Preston. Uh, after all, that's what lawyers are for, isn't it? Oh, uh, by the way, could you have your car take me home? Oh, my car? Of course. Uh, uh, wouldn't a taxi cab do as well? Oh, that would be fine. Wouldn't you like to come along and see your sister first? I think not. I don't like to leave my younger sister and Miss Parkhurst alone. I rarely go out of the house. Louise does all the traveling for us. I must say it was quite an ordeal coming down. I got lost several times in the subway. The subway's changed a good deal since I was a child. <clears throat> Helen, would you see that Miss Clarendon gets a taxi cab and pay the driver in advance? Thank you, Mr. Preston. I'll just put it on our bill. Subways are very expensive. How did the poor manage, I wonder? Oh, Miss Clarendon, I'm curious. How did you come to choose me as your attorney? Oh, well, that's quite a story. Someday we'll have tea, and I'll tell you about it. I'll look forward to that day. Goodbye. Bye. Who is that? Miss Elspeth Clarendon, a maiden lady. Quiet, eh? No, her older sister's our client, Miss Louise Clarendon. She's currently being held at the Women's House of Detention. You want shot whipping? No. Don't tell me I'll get it. Assaulted a man she saw beating an old horse in the street. Use an umbrella, right? Wrong again. Bank robbery. What? Ken, there are certain hours in your father's life when he needs you. Don't desert him now. Bank robbery? You mean Elspeth actually left the house? Oh, poor dears, they must be terribly worried about me. Do they know why I'm here? Of course. <gasps> well, they think it's some sort of mistake. Oh, that's better. They mustn't know the truth, Mr. Preston. Do you understand they mustn't? What is the truth, Miss Clarendon? Did you really? Oh, yes, I did. $1,342.76. I did. You actually threatened to blow up the bank? When I prepared the note, I just said, or else. Or else? Well, you have to threaten something, don't you? I don't know. I've never robbed a bank. Well, it was my first time, too. So you said you'd blow it up? Well, it just popped into my head. The first thing, in fact. Well, suppose the teller had said, all right, go ahead and blow up the bank. What would you have done? Oh, I suppose I would have taken my note and gone to another bank. I'd have been terribly embarrassed. <laughs> i show you. Taxes, penalty, and interest. $1,342.76. It's from the New York City Board of Tax Assessments. I suppose now we lose it? Lose what? The house. That's what we owe on the house. But robbing a bank for it, you couldn't hope to get away with it. Oh, yes, I could have. I picked a bank just around the corner from the tax bureau. All I had to do was walk a few hundred feet around the corner to the bureau, pay the bill at the cashier's window, and the house would have been saved. Then the bank and the city of New York could have argued about the money, but the bill would have been paid, don't you see? But you would have been caught. But I only had to be free long enough to pay the bill. And that shouldn't have taken more than 15 minutes. I never dreamed I'd be caught so quickly. Usually it takes them weeks and months to catch bank robbers. Oh, things happen so fast these days. Don't you have any other resources? The house is all we've got of all that Papa left us. But nothing lasts forever, Mr. Preston. Then, uh... 
you, you've been broke. For four years. But don't let my sisters hear that. Well, they already know, don't they? Oh, no. I manage very well. We've had enough to eat and enough to heat part of the house and pay the gas and the electric light bill and buy little things. But how have you managed without money? Oh, we've had money. But you just said that you didn't, didn't you? I've been stealing. Oh, it sounds awful, doesn't it? And it is awful. But there are things more awful, my dears. Now, how could I let Elspeth and Genevieve and Miss Parkhurst know? I couldn't. It would have been too much for them. They're terribly innocent women. You could have all worked for a living. Doing what? The employment market for ladies of genteel education is very limited, Mr. Preston. But there are agencies which take care of people like you and your sisters. Oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. Preston. The Clarendon family has never taken charity. We give. We do not take. Well, Miss Clarendon, I don't think there's anything you can do now but plead guilty. You want me to get up in court and admit that I'm guilty of robbing a bank? More or less, uh, yes, uh, that's what we recommend. <gasps> Mr. Preston, I will not do that. And have my sisters hear me admit that I'm a criminal? Oh, no. But if you plead innocent, the judge may not be lenient with you, and you're sure to be convicted. My sisters won't believe what any court says. They'll only believe it if I admit it, and I will not admit any such thing. Why, if I did that, one thing would lead to another, and they'd learn everything, and they'd be crushed. No, Mr. Preston, I won't do it, no. But if the judge sends you to prison, Miss Clarendon, you won't be able to shelter your sisters any longer. Well, then, find some ingenious way of setting me free. That's what lawyers do, isn't it? Well, they, they certainly try, Miss Clarendon, but... Well, then, it's settled. You both find some ingenious way of setting me free? <laughs> Miss Clarendon, before you go, there's one thing I don't understand. Didn't you realize if you were challenged in the bank, they'd open your handbag and find out it was empty? But it wasn't empty. You mean there was something in it? A jar. A jar? Yes, a jar of cash for jelly, like my mother used to make. Down, 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 down. What? We're falling down the rabbit hole. We stepped through the looking glass. Crossed over into Wonderland, my boy. Don't fight it. Before we're through, I expect to see the Cheshire Cat. I expect to see the Red Queen. I expect to see the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. Come, let's take a taxi. Subways are far too expensive for us. Schwartz, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Schwartz? We've been told that you know the Clarendon sisters better than anyone in the neighborhood. You, the whole family. My father opened up here in 1912. We're 50 years in the same location. My father, Oliver Shulam, knew the old Mr. Clarendon, Oliver Shulam, as well. Oliver who? Oliver Shulam. It means may he rest in peace. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. No, I know the three of them very well. Three? I thought there were four of them. No, just three. Louise, Genevieve, and Elspeth. Well, then who's Miss Parkhurst? A relative? Who knows? She came to the house to sell magazine subscriptions 15 years ago. They found out she lived alone, and she's been with them ever since. She's never paid them a dime for rent or board, and they've never asked her for it. That's the kind of people they are, you know. The kind that's so easy to take advantage of that people break their necks night and day to see that no one does take advantage of them. Why hasn't anyone in the neighborhood tried to help them? Do you know that Miss Louise has been stealing to keep her sisters alive? I know, I know. And who do you think she steals from? From me. She has for four years now. And she always steals the same thing. Wait a minute, I'll show you. Here. This is what she steals. But once a week she comes in and steals this toaster from the counter. I put it near the door here so it should be easier for her. She takes the toaster under her coat to her fence. She knows a fence? Fence, schmance. He's a junk man named Strafucci down the block, some fence. Strafucci gives her $7 for the toaster. Then she comes back and buys an electric light bulb from me. I charge her the wholesale price, 12 cents a bulb. Then she does the family shopping. Everybody gives her wholesale prices. The $7 she gets buys $20 worth of groceries. 
and so, and so, and so, and so. After all, who wants to make a profit on a woman like that? But what about the toaster? Strafucci, the fence, brings it back the next day. I pay him three and a half bucks. Then the day I expect her to come stealing again, I put it out on the counter for her. She swipes it, takes it to Strafucci. He gives her seven bucks, brings it back, and so, and so, and so, and so, for four years. On seven dollars a week. I once put a mixer out for her to steal at once. I figured on a mixer, Strafucci would give her $15. But she wouldn't steal it. She took the toaster again. Then she has been accepting charity. What do you mean, charity? Listen, she works hard at that stealing. It puts a terrible strain on her. And on me, too. And I don't want anyone catching her at it like a customer or a cop. I figure she'd get better with experience. She gets worse. She's so bad. She looks guilty all the time. She's obvious. She's clumsy. And she feels terrible about it. Your heart melts for a woman like that. Look, you've got to keep her out of jail. We'll certainly do all we can, Mr. Schwartz. Being poor, is something you can live with. Being poor, there's always the hope of being rich. But if you were rich, and then you get poor, and there's no hope of ever being rich again, that's sad. That's truly sad. The blues have a way <laughs> of keeping you from sleeping. The blues have a way. What are you in for, honey? Now, you want to hear? Are you ready for a kick? That gorgeous guard out there told me. Honey's in for robbing the bank. <laughs> Congratulations. That's class. Day work. Yeah. Where'd you learn that? Come here, baby. These things are always a lot better if you've got a partner, see? And before you go up for trial, we'll talk about it. I've got a few ideas that the two of us could team up on. Oh, I don't think so. Selfish. Yeah, like Schwartz said, I'm the fence. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Did you ever buy any other stolen property from her, Mr. Petrucci? No, that crummy toaster. Always that same toaster. Uh, I told Schwartz, put in something good for her. Give the lady a break. You know what I mean? Give her a chance to live. What's a lousy seven dollars a week? Well, he said he did put out a mixer. Sure, but she didn't take it. I tell her myself, I say, look, Miss Louise, give me something good, huh? Something big. But she's afraid. I, I told Schwartz, put in a line of jewelry, nothing expensive, something which sells for twenty, thirty dollars. Then I can figure I can give her fifteen dollars a week and she won't become suspicious. Schwartz, he said, this is a drugstore, not a jewelry store. I ask you, how can a woman live on $7 a week? Why does she have to rob a bank? She's got to have money. All right, we'll raise it. I raised 6000 for St. Agnes. And Schwartz, he raised four grand for the synagogue. We know she needs it. Forget about it. What the heck between Schwartz and me? Well, we can raise 1300 for the ladies. Why didn't she ask me? Why did she have to go and knock off a bank? She couldn't ask. She couldn't ask anyone, apparently. That's the kind of person she is. Ah, I tell you, the wrong people got the pride. 
I, I got some relatives. Oh, boy. They ask plenty quick. They ain't so bashful when it comes to asking. Oh, boy. But I think the, the wrong people. The wrong people got the prize, hmm? The wrong people. And in here, ladies, we have our recreation. About 25% of the prisoners can use it at one time, so we have four recreation periods a day. Oh, can we go right in, or do we have to look through the bars? No bars in the recreation hall, ma'am. We can go right in. Come on, let's go. This is it, ladies. Paintings, puzzles, cultural activities for the girls. They look a desperate lot, don't they? Poor things. There's a kind of... Hardness about their features, you know what I mean? Perhaps it's the hard life they lead. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hardened lives. There's a difference. Desperate lives. You can see the criminal look in their faces. Now, ladies, if you'll step this way, we'll go to see the kitchen. Oh, dear, the kitchen. I'm starved for lunch and I'm on a diet. Oh, but why should you do it? Oh, my dear, you are precious. <laughs> You're right. That chick has class. Good afternoon, oh. Miss Clarendon. I wonder if you could spare us a few moments. Oh, Mr. Pearson, how wonderful. Come in. And son. Oh, I can't tell you how thrilled we are. You are a perfectly marvelous attorney. To think you've been able to accomplish so much in such a short time. Please come in and meet my sister and Miss Parkhurst. This is my sister, Miss Genevieve Clarendon, and Miss Parkhurst. And this is Louise's attorney, Mr. Lawrence Preston. Oh, jolly good work. Jolly good job, sir. Good show. I'm very much impressed, Preston. Oh, Mr. Preston, I just knew you were the right attorney when I stuck a pin in your name. I knew it, I knew it. Well, thank you, ladies, for all this, but I'm afraid I haven't been able to do very much. Oh, he's oh, modest. Oh, I knew he would be modest. I knew it, I knew it. I hope to be able to do more. He's ready. How pleasant to find you here. And what good timing, just a moment for tea. Yes. Children find some place for our friends to sit in. Yes. What are you doing here? How did you get bail? Bail? What's that? You were being held on a felony, Miss Clarendon. You had to get bail to get released. Well, I didn't get bail, whatever that is. They didn't give me any there. Should they have? How did you get out of the Women's House of Detention? Oh, I see. Well, the door was open, and there was a group of women there going to some luncheon. So I followed them out of the building. They were very sweet women. They took me to a delicious luncheon in Chinatown, and one of the ladies had a chauffeured car and brought me home afterwards. Oh, it was very pleasant. You mean you broke jail? Oh, no. Oh, no. Louise never breaks anything. Don't you feel well, Mr. Preston? Hot tea. Better give him some hot tea. That'll brace him up. And take some deep breaths, Mr. Preston. Cream or lemon? Lemon. Make it lemon. Down, 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 down. <laughs> I just walked out to his grandma TNT. Boy, what a story. Oh, but every policeman and prison officer in town feels like a fool. You should have seen their faces when I brought her back to the women's house of detention. I've given ten bucks to have been there. Can you imagine how the DA is going to feel? Say, I hadn't thought of that. I wouldn't want to be in the position of prosecuting her now. The minute I walk into the courtroom, everybody's going to hate me, including the judge. Uh. <laughs> that sounds like a dirty laugh. I just had a dirty idea. You know, sometimes pretrial publicity can work in your client's favor. Every bit of this helps Miss Louise Clarendon. Well, sure not going to hurt her. I mean, she's practically a heroine now. Let's capitalize on it. Okay, now. I'm going to call the DA. You get on that phone and call the Tax Bureau, and then we'll call the House of Detention. And someone at the Women's Prison League, right? All we're going to do is open a can of peas and ask them if they can see to the bottom of it. We'll find out if anyone wants to prosecute a sweet old lady who just tried to roll up a bank with a jar of calf's foot jelly. <laughs> All right, let's get down to the meat of it. Larry, your client was caught in the act of robbing a bank. She broke jail. On the 
grand larceny charge he has into prayer in court. Agreed? I would say offhand, you're probably right. Okay. And on the jailbreaking charge, she's also dead. Mm, yes, uh, I believe so, on the basis of what I know so far. Okay. Now, here's what the district attorney's told me he'll do. And it's very generous. Have her plead guilty to attempted grand larceny one, and I'll ask the court to be lenient. You can probably count on a suspended sentence. We'll drop the jailbreaking charge. The newspapers have had enough fun with that. And we'll wind the whole matter up quietly. Now, that's the deal. Well, that sounds generous, as you said. But... Now, don't make trouble. She attempted grand larceny in the first place because the city was going to take her home away from her. What do you want us to do? Pay her taxes? Well, now, that shouldn't be too great a problem. Uh, the Board of Tax Assessment Office has instructed me to drop the tax penalties and uh, arrange some installment scheme on the tax liability. They can't pay anything, Mr. Thatcher. They're destitute. They haven't any money. <laughs> Let them sell the house. And there they are out on the street. Four old ladies in their shabby, old-fashioned clothes. They're really quite nice old ladies, especially Miss Louise. Have you ever really spoken to her? She's a dear old soul, and of quite a respectable family. Of course she is. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had her to lunch. Perhaps you were the person who drove her home after she broke jail. I never dreamed she was escaping. But she was, wasn't she, Captain McCoy? And you helped her, Mrs. Hunt. You aren't serious. Now, look, Larry. Uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Preston has some suggestion which might uh, settle this unhappy dispute. Well, yeah. Well, I wouldn't like to see Miss Louise go to prison. And I wouldn't like to see her sisters evicted. Well, if they're really destitute, I'm certain the Department of Welfare can assist them. How's that, Mr. Preston? Unfortunately, the Clarendon sisters won't accept charity from anyone. Then there's no deal. If you won't be reasonable, we'll ask the maximum sentence. She robbed a bank and threatened to blow it up. She broke jail. Well, we'll press both charges. And I'll see that the city forecloses that tax lien. <laughs> I'll bet that house of theirs is crawling with violations. That won't look very good in the newspapers. Newspapers blow hot and cold, Larry. Today, sob stories, tomorrow, library item. Maybe, but there are ways to keep a story alive. After all, this is very hot copy. Heartless city evicts four old ladies. We'll sleep in the streets tonight, say Clarendon sisters. Their combined age is 267. Where will they sleep tonight? City Hall, picketed by aged. Go on, go on, get tough with Louise Clarendon if you never want to run for public office in this city. Good afternoon, gentlemen, ladies. My secretary Larry. will see you out. Larry. Jailbreaking. I think Women's Prison League will want a full-scale investigation of any institution which is so lax in its prison security that it simply allows its inmates to waltz right out the door. She didn't waltz right out the door. You led her right out the door. Two doors. Steel doors. How dare you invite Just remember one thing, Frank. There's an How dare you? All I know is that and she never forgot not going to take any dead weight along with it. <laughs> My age is, is 267 years. <laughs> it is a lesser offense. And it's about as generous an offer as you can expect. In fact, it is more generous than I hoped. Oh, it's kind of them. Very kind. Oh, they have their ulterior purposes, but that shouldn't matter to you. The point is, you'll be set free. You can keep your home. And you and your sisters, or Miss Parkhurst, can get a job. But I'd have to say I'm guilty. You'd never have to steal again. Oh, I realize you've gone through a great deal of trouble for me, both of you. And I do so want to please you. You won't do it? I can't, Lawrence. I simply can't. Why can't you? Elspeth and Genevieve look up to me. They're children in many ways, despite their mature years. They need sheltering and protecting. That's what I've lived for, Lawrence. 
their faith in me. And not only those two, but Miss Parkhurst as well. Oh, I know she seems strong and self-assured to you, but she's really not. Their faith in me is what they think I am. Why, if they learned that I was the thief, they'd be shattered. No. I'd rather go to prison than destroy their faith in me. But they'd be helpless without you. No, my boy. They'd be helpless without their faith in me. Aren't you confusing two things? They have faith in you, of course. But I think it's your pride that worries you most. You're proud that they think you've taken care of them without stealing, isn't that it? I suppose you're right. And it's the same pride that makes you steal before you beg. There are those who take and those who won't. I'd rather steal than take charity. And yet you'd go to prison rather than admit you were stealing? All right, I'm going to hurt your pride. This stealing you've told us about, I've investigated it. You steal from Mr. Schwartz. He knows about it, and so does everyone else in the neighborhood. And no. winked at it for years, no. because they knew you needed money. They have, in fact, been giving you charity for four years without telling you. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, no? You always steal the same thing, a toaster. You take it to Mr. Strafucci, and he always gives you $7. And then Mr. Strafucci returns no. the toaster the next day to Mr. Schwartz, and they divide up the cost of keeping you and your sister and Miss Parkerston groceries. And they're not the only ones. Every merchant in the neighborhood sell you goods and necessities below cost because they know you're in need and they've been doing this for years. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You haven't been stealing. You have been an object of charity of many, many people. And the district attorney is also offering you charity. He's <laughs> offering to let you out of the consequences of your crime. Now, you've accepted charity before. You will again. You will plead guilty. Not Miss Louise. We're all here. Oh, how good of you both to come here. Don't worry, Miss Louise. You're going to be all right. Everybody says so. They didn't do anything to you. Oh, how can I ever thank you for all you've done for me all these years? I'm so grateful. Not for all. Sure, it was nothing. Mr. Preston told me about the toaster. What toaster? I'm so ashamed. That lawyer's got a big mouth. There ain't no shame in being poor, Miss Louise. Everything is going to be all right, Miss Louise. Your Honor, the defendant desires to plead guilty to the charge of attempted grand larceny. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Is the district attorney any objection? None, Your Honor. I feel that since this is the first offense by the defendant, and since she has up to now led an exemplary life under trying circumstances, and in the light of her advanced years, and by reason of her cooperative attitude, my office respectfully recommends that Your Honor suspend sentence. I see. It's distressing to see a woman like you before this bench. Yes, Your Honor. The district attorney mentioned trying circumstances. I don't know what they are, but they must have been trying indeed to drive a woman like yourself into a criminal action. Will you waive the 48-hour rule? Yes, Your Honor. I have no objection. Miss Louise Clarendon, you are hereby sentenced to imprisonment for a period of not less than one and not more than three years. On the recommendation of the district attorney, the execution of the sentence is suspended. I hope never to see this lady in court again. Court's adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. You're a very nice young man. You must have been well brought up. Miss Louise, I'm... Congratulations, Miss Louise. Maybe I was wrong. I should have left her something. Her pride was very precious to her. You don't take things like that away from people who have nothing else. Dad, let's knock off today and go fishing. 
Or get a rowboat and just get out in the middle of the lake and sit, hmm? Was I wrong? Well, she's home. She's free. In the long run, it wasn't wrong. Where are you going? I'm going to find out once and for all if I was wrong. Want to come along? Yeah. It's working. Joe. Shouldn't someone answer it? Runs a cracking good drugstore, that Schwartz. Hello? Yes? Oh, that's so nice of you. Yes, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Strapucci. Uh, the doorbell rang, Elspeth. That was Mr. Strapucci. British fellow, isn't he? The doorbell's ringing, Elspeth. She's sending some of his relatives over tomorrow to paint the house, and they're going to repair the windows and the radiator, and also, oh, this is so wonderful. He's giving us a party this afternoon. A party? Oh! Oh, what's the matter? I haven't had my hair done in 11 years. Oh, it looks in great shape. <laughs> Some of the people in the neighborhood are coming and they're bringing food and... Oh, Mr. Preston and Son, do come in. Guess who's here? Mr. Preston and Son. Oh, it was so good of you to stop by. You are a clever lawyer. We always knew there was no truth in the charge that Louise was a thief. Oh, how can we ever thank you enough? <laughs> Jolly good show, Preston. And uh, thank you both for the job. Mm -hmm. The job? Oh, Miss Parkhurst starts work on Monday at the Bureau of Records in the Central Filing Division. <laughs> Doesn't that impress you? It <laughs> certainly does. You'll be smashing to get to work again. Uh, I'm all keyed up at the <laughs> idea. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? And we are going to have a party this afternoon, our first in so many years. You like all this, don't you? I love it. We all do. It's odd how much you can miss and not realize it. This house hasn't been lively since Mama and Papa were alive. Well, it wasn't so lively then. And we will have you to thank for it. I don't see why. Well, when I first made up my mind to go out of this house, it was as if I were breaking a pattern. But after meeting you and talking to you, I knew it was right. I can't remember when I've been so happy. Where's Louise? She's upstairs in her room. She's rather tired. Then I won't disturb her. Oh, yes, please. Please go up and see her. I know she'll want to talk to you. Come, let me show you. Her room is at the top of the stairs. You can see the door from here. Mr. Preston, I know she pleaded guilty to the charge. I know she had to do that for our sakes. Just as she has had to do everything she's done for our sakes. Please tell her we love her all the more for that. Uh, come on, son. <laughs> Miss Louise, may I come in? Your sister, Elspeth, said you were tired, but wanted to talk to me. I wanted to apologize for not speaking to you in court this morning. I couldn't trust myself not to cry. I hate crying old women, don't you? Not when they cry out of happiness. <laughs> I am grateful, Lawrence. Thank you. You had many, many friends in court. Pitying friends. I don't suppose we'll be able to avoid charity in terms of money. 
but I hope we'll be able to avoid it in terms of pity. Pity has a way of wearing out. And when that occurs, you'll be happy again? Happy that your sisters will have to rely on you and no one else? Well, I took care of them before, when they needed it. I can do it again, alone. Miss Parkhurst has a job now. Oh, it won't last. Are you so unsure of their love for you that you have to keep them locked up as slaves to your need to be wanted? But that's a hideous remark. Do you know why I came up here? I came up here to apologize to you for telling you the truth, for shattering your pride, your self-esteem, and your courage. I thought I was dreadfully wrong, but I'm not going to apologize for what I did, and I'm not going to apologize for what I'm going to do. What you're going to do? I'm going to tell you some more of the truth, and the truth is you stole, not because you and your sisters needed food, but because you needed something else more important to you. But you're talking in riddles. You stole because stealing made you necessary to Elspeth, Genevieve, and Miss Parkhurst. Now, didn't you take pride in the fact that you could take care of them? But of course I did. And don't you now resent the possibility that others will take care of them, or that they might take care of themselves, and so destroy your usefulness? Why, if I thought they could take care of themselves, I'd be the happiest person in the world. You are a liar, Miss Louise. A high-born, genteel, Dresden, China liar. Don't you love your sisters? Of course I do. Well, then why can't you concede they also love you? Not for what you do for them, but simply because of what you are. You asked me once if I thought you were a silly woman. I think you are far from that. In fact, I think you were smart enough to know you were taking the same toaster from Mr. Swartz week after week now, weren't you? I dented it once when I dropped it and worried about the dent. I was afraid Mr. Strafucci wouldn't give me the seven dollars if he discovered it. And the next time you stole the toaster, you noticed the dent? And you realized it was the same toaster? Yes. Now, it shouldn't have taken you long to realize that Mr. Strafucci and Mr. Schwartz were giving you charity. I knew it. I wouldn't admit it, but I knew it. And the other shopkeepers? Why do you think they all conspired that way? Was it out of pity? If it was, it was an extraordinary display of pity. It went on for years and was carefully hidden. They are my friends. More than your friends. They love you. They love you, Miss Louise. Come down with me, Louise. Hmm? Come down. Son of yours eats salami. So far, he's killed a pound of mine and a pound of Strafucci. <laughs> but I saved some especially for you, Miss Louise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Schwartz. But I've got something better than salami for you, Miss Louise. Hey, Strafucci. You give me dopey argument on the Italian salami against Jewish salami, and I tell you, you lose, Schwartz. This young person is crazy about Mama Scafucci oh. salami. <laughs> crazy is right. He'll need my medical attention before he's done. <laughs> but now's the time. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody quiet, please. Everybody, please be quiet. We got an announcement to make. Go ahead, Strafucci. You haven't got it. I've got it. I, I know, I know, I know that. I got a speech already wrote out. Nobody needs speeches. Strafucci, just tell her. Tell her in your own words. Okay. In my own words. Not like the ones I wrote, huh? Me, I got a Miss Louise. Oh, for Pete's sake, in English. That's not what say in English if you give me time, huh? I May can I see you already. This is going to take to the middle of next week. You're too flowery. My dear Miss Louise, we, your friends of the neighborhood, 
want you never to leave us. We always want you to live with us and to make sure that you and your sisters and Miss Parkhurst never go away. We, your friends in the neighborhood, make you a present. And this present is from everyone, from all your friends in the neighborhood. And Mr. Strafucci will now present it. Present, Strafucci. Me I got him, Miss Lewis. In English. <laughs> it's your tax on this house, Miss Lewis. Fully paid. Use it in good health. I want to thank you all for coming here today and sharing your lives with us. And sharing even more, sharing your love and kindness and concern. In time, I hope I'll be able to pass on to others what you've given me or part of it. And this wonderful man and his son. They're responsible for many, many wonderful things. My attorneys and my friends, I hope for life, for I am theirs. Lawrence and Kenneth Preston. continue to be mine. <laughs> oh. God bless you both. And come by often, won't you? Of course, Louise. And don't close the door. After all, friends may want to drop by. And a closed door isn't a friendly sight. <laughs> and the slidey toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. Oh, Mimsy, where the burrow grows. And the moan brows out gray. But where the jabber walk, my son? The jaws that bite. The claws that snatch. But where the jub-jub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. snatch. <laughs> 